the electron transport chain in bacteria. Bacteria do not have mitochondria, so they must make their ATP using some other structure in the cell. The electron transport chain process happens in the cell membrane of bacteria. Overall, hydrogen ions are pumped out of the cell as they donate their electrons to the various electron carriers in the chain. They are then pumped back in at the very end, which is the specific part of the chain that produces ATP for the bacterial cell to use. So first the process starts out, electrons are initially donated from NADH2. which is a product of prior cellular respiration processes known as glycolysis and the TCA cycle. The electrons are then carried and transferred via a series of redox reactions to different electron carriers located in the plasma membrane. The first electron carrier complex is a substrate oxidoreductase called NDH1 in bacteria. So this first electron carrier complex is known as NDH1. This NDH1 has FMN or flavin mononucleotide within it. The NADH2 donates two electrons to FMN and therefore reduces it. It requires two hydrogen protons to bind to the FMN in order to balance out its charge, making it into FMNH2. Also inside the NDH1 are iron sulfur centers known as Fe4S4. FMNH2 donates an electron one at a time to the Fe4S4. The Fe4S4 then passes that electron onto another iron sulfur center one at a time as well. The first electron carrier ends up moving a total of four hydrogen ions across the membrane out of the cell. The second electron carrier is known as the quinone pool. The two electrons that went through the NDH1 are then picked up by a quinone molecule. This reduces the quinone molecule so then it is transformed into quinol or QH2. These quinols diffuse into the membrane and carry the reduction energy from the electrons to other transport carriers. All right, so the third step in the electron transport chain in bacteria is known as a terminal oxidase, otherwise known as cytochrome bio, cytochrome bio quinol oxidase. What this does is it takes a quinol molecule from the quinone pool in step two and donates two electrons to heme B. This process moves two hydrogens across the membrane. The heme B then donates those two electrons to heme O3. This process is coupled with a proton pump that moves two more hydrogens across the membrane. These three copper ions down here hold a molecular oxygen in place. So at this point, the one NADH2 molecule has moved a total of eight hydrogen ions across the membrane. So in order for this molecular oxygen to be fully reduced, we must use another NADH2 molecule to go through these processes, resulting in a total of 16 hydrogen ions moved across the membrane. Once that's done, four hydrogen ions from the cytoplasm come to bind to this molecular oxygen, resulting in two water molecules, which indicates that oxygen is the final electron acceptor in this process. So now over here, we have ATP synthesis, which is done by F1, F0 ATPase in bacteria. This process is fueled by the proton motive force. So for this demonstration, I have gone ahead and drawn the 16 hydrogen ions um, from before. So every time one hydrogen ion is pumped through the ATP synthase, that fuels the phosphorylation of ADP and an inorganic phosphate to ATP, resulting in energy for the bacteria to use. 